So uh, Yanni mentioned um, conceptual history. Uh, what he didn't men mention is that he is the editor, um, as well as I am, of uh, contributions to the history of concepts. So I'm, I'm shamelessly uh, using this platform to to appeal to those of you who study, who research uh, concepts in newspapers. Uh, th this is something that really interests us because we are um, we are, as conceptual historians, very interested in, in the interface with digital humanities, you know, and, and um, how to move the, this community and, and scholarship forward in that direction. Uh, but I came here to talk about something else, which is um, that as a scholar, I was very lucky to get a job um, fantasizing about the ideal platform, actually, for what I do. Um, and the platform is JPress, Historical Jewish Press. Um, and I think it, you can see it looks familiar. So what we have, we have the images in TIFF, we have the, um, um, the OCR in some kind of a version of, of Alto XML. Um, and I have a few um, sort of visions about about where the corpus can go or how it be will become a, a research corpus. One of them is actually um, talking about what is not there, what is not there yet or what will never be there because it is extinct or disappeared or we can't get it. Because I think one, one of the nice things that we've seen here in many of the projects is contextualizing the finding, the, the finding and also um, enabling a kind of corpus view that shows the, the inner structure of the corpus according to genre, according to years, timelines and, and maps, of course. And uh, so like here, for example, we have this title map. And it is, of course, very misleading. It gives us a, a, a picture that we want to interpret as, as the Jewish press, but it's actually very little of the f of what was there, and um, it's only what we have in um, in the corpus. And there are all these um, catalog print catalogs uh, available of of Jewish press. Sometimes even indices with information f with very rich metadata about um, the authors and and titles and genres and. Uh, one of the things I would like to do is actually to map the entire phenomenon of Jewish press using these print uh, resources, but also the, the digital uh, uh, resources and, and put the corpus on, the, on this context. This is why I also approach a few of, the, of you in order to search for all these hidden knowledge base about Jewish press in the various countries and, and languages. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is one, one vision like that. Um, the other is, how did I get here, um, is really about the pipeline of how it all will work eventually. First, I want to sort of release the, the text from, from the PRXML. This is the, format, the current format that is given to us by a commercial vendor that does the OCR for us. Um, release it and, and move it through a pipeline that will not only um, enable download and, and to give it to research, but something that I also men mentioned before, to enable researchers to work on the, on the text or on the corpus or even on the images, process them, and then return it to the system. So it will be indexed so that you can return the material into the system with better OCR, with uh, maybe tagging uh, of pictures and um, identity recognition, uh, various, uh, various processes. But this, this pipeline will, will enable this also collaboration between the library and the university um, to be something that is not just like, um, you know, some kind of exploitation on, on either side, but, but a true collaboration. I think that's, that's it, I think. Yep. Okay, Thanks. Thank you. So, uh, pl plenty of time for questions, if uh, if there are any. Uh, 
Can you just tell us what, how you identify Jewish press? So does it need to be self-identified? No. Um, it's, this is actually one of the least uh, problematic questions of definition because uh, Jewish press, uh, th there's a lot of Jewish um, publishers and or journalists and you know that were simply involved in the national press wherever they were but normally th the Jewish newspapers are very well identified. There is I think one contested case which is actually the first the the Gazeta d'Amsterdam that claims to be the first, but but it was actually a commercial, uh, not a commercial, uh, sort of a newspaper about trade in Amsterdam and, and the ships, and and it was apparently used for 16 something, uh, and it was used for for general public. But normally, it's it's the content, and it's very no, it's very it's, easy. It's the historical agents identifying the press as Jewish. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there are, I don't think there are many, um, how do you say, like uh, border, borderline cases. There's, there's one inter-religious uh, um, newspaper, but that's already very clearly defined. And, and again, it could be in any language. And we have, we have many languages, we want to have more. I've got a question actually. Are, are there any um, relevant titles in um, other archives? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, so actually the, the part of my work is, is working on this collaboration model. Uh, I think we, we reached one successful uh, case with um, when I always try to trace someone who's um, an expert in Jewish history that um, will identify the, you know, maybe has a catalog of, of uh, in, in this case, Dutch press, and this is the, she's the curator, curator of uh, Rosenthaliana and Delfer, she, whom you now all know, and we, we just connected them together. We'll have a joint uh, application for digitization of all Dutch Jewish press and I, I expect that what we'll do is we will um, take everything Hebrew and Yiddish so in, in the Hebrew letter because we we have better um, experience with OCR and, and all that and they will keep the the Dutch as well as what they already have in Dutch in, in Delphi and and we'll just man try to sort of co-share the, the, the metadata in a way. And this is, I hope, what we'll do with, with every other library or project, yeah. So, so the expectation would there be one place to find them, but then if you follow some of the links, then we'll take you to yeah. one archive and some mm -hmm. to the other. Yeah. 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 So Claren has this, uh, this uh, system that's called the Virtual Collection Registry. So there it would be possible to make like a, a virtual collection pointing to objects in various archives which all belong to your collection of, of Jewish uh, press. Yeah, the problem is that uh, many times we have, for example, Delphi, you know, it's, it's hard to find the person who knows because it's not it's not there in the metadata. People would not write. I think people would be even slightly scared to write, oh, it's a Jewish newspaper. Um, this is not like a categorization that we usually have for, for um, press. So we really have to do the research. And luckily, there were so many people working on, on you know, the history of Jewish press uh, that we have this information. We just need to, to put it like, together with what we have digitally or in the libraries. And, and tie it all together into one like grand catalog, basically. Yeah. Well, the virtual collection registry is not having a query or whatever. You can just store really pointers to that you mm -hmm. found in your research into these collections. Okay, thanks. So. Yeah. Thanks. Um, right. Well, I think we can move on to the uh, next speaking now. So